All right, so in a way of a little in introduction, um, this will probably make most of the experienced uh, PixInsight users in the audience uh, kind of cringe. Um, but what I, what I tried to do with this uh, exercise or this, this introduction of PixInsight, uh, this is the same information I give to my, my class that has, you know, uh, typically no one has ever seen uh, PixInsight. And, and basically what I'm trying to do is establish uh, a, a foundation or a, 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 basic, a basic workflow. Um, I am by no means as expert in PixInsight as, as most of the others in, in the group, but I've used it for, I'm going on for about two years now. And, and so what, what uh, I recently found out, which uh, kind of really gave me inspiration, and I use this as inspiration uh, for my students as well, is... Uh, is uh, this is uh, Joe uh, De Pasquale? Uh, he's the he's the lead uh, processing engineer uh, uh, for the James Webb Space Telescope. And uh, about three months ago, three or four months ago, um, I had a live uh, NASA briefing uh, with uh, with Joe, and so Joe took us through. Um, the processing of of the um, of one of the first uh, deep sky images, and uh, and immediately his first screen was the was the PixInsight uh, splash screen, and and I got all kinds of all kinds of goosebumps uh, because uh, it was it was amazing to see, uh, and he actually took us through from the raw data uh, uh, again all using uh, Pix PixInsight. And so, um, what uh, what I hope to do tonight for the for the for the newbies, um, uh, folks that are really not very familiar with PixInsight or have just kind of stepped their toes in the water, uh, I want to just give you a general overview of the basic workflow uh, that that uh, I suggest to to newcomers, and then within that workflow. As you gain experience in PixInsight, uh, certainly, certainly you can you can expand, uh, you know the the individual individual steps. Um, and in fact, one of the exciting things about um, you know working with some of this James Webb Space data is I've used uh, I've used this image myself uh, for teaching, and and have used some of the more recent uh, tools. Uh, AI tools like Star Exterminator uh, to to actually remove the the stars so that uh, I can just talk about the galaxies and 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 zoom in on the interesting interesting features. So anyway, it's uh, uh, I hope that that's a little inspirational for for newcomers. Um, uh, PixInsight uh, is definitely uh, can be intimidating uh, when you when you first start, um, but literally you can just uh, get through PixInsight on a very basic level, um, and and then as your experience level uh, increases and and as you attend groups like this. Uh, and new features in PixInsight come out, or you watch more Adam Block videos. Um, you can you can actually expand. So so when the when the real experienced Pix processing folks in the group here say that they don't really have a workflow, um, that's because they're they're basically uh, you know extrapolating and 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 expanding individual blocks within an actual workflow that's just so ingrained to them that they're really not flying by the seat of their pants they're not they're not doing things uh, to a linear to a non, to a nonlinear image that should only be done to a linear that it's just that they've got in their in their backbones already uh, the the workflow and and they then uh, expand and 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 uh, go off in 50 different directions based on 
uh, the, you know, the image and the characteristics of the image. Um, and so I don't, I never want to say to my students who are just first learning uh, that there is no workflow to PIX Insight. So, um, so what I'm going to do is take us up to 10,000 feet here and, and, and in layman terms, uh, talk about that, in fact, what Arun just went through is that we do need to calibrate images in, in what we call create master images. Um, uh, and then uh, we, if we're using uh, a monochrome camera and uh, we're taking individual filters, and that's the example that I'm going to use tonight where we're using a monochrome camera and using uh, various filters. Um, we then end up with all of the components of a color color image, <clears throat> and then uh, we need to create that color image. And then we do some basic cropping because as we overlay those channels and, and combine those individual channels into a color image, uh, we're going to see, especially if you're using dithering on, on, the, on your channels, uh, on your acquisitions, uh, you're going to see errors on the on the peripheral of the image that we want to we want to crop out, and then uh, then of course we've all heard the term stretch, uh, stretching the image uh, where with the the non the nonlinear image uh, is uh, or the the uh, linear image is not very remarkable, <laughs> and. And all of the information, if you look at the histogram, is is crammed to 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 the very lowest levels of the pixel values. Uh, so we end up stretching the image, changing it from a linear to a nonlinear image. And then, of course, we want to reduce noise, uh, background noise uh, uh, in the image. We want to sharpen the image. Uh, do our basic uh, color saturation uh, adjustments. Uh, adjust contrast and and then uh, and then convert it to a JPEG so that we can so that we can uh, present it and show it show it to our friends. Um, just like just like Arun's uh, presentation, uh, please feel free to interrupt me or ask questions or if I'm going too fast, especially when we start dealing with the with the processing icons um, uh, in in Pix Insight. And so, uh, so yeah, feel feel free to just uh, just just jump in. So I'm gonna need to get the pictures out of the way here on my second monitor. Okay, so so now let's let's translate this to 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 a, a Pix Insight workflow. Um, uh, you know, I used to make my my students suffer in 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 doing everything manually, uh, calibrating uh, the images, and and then. Um, and then registering them, and then and then uh, you know, basically doing all of those steps manually. And then you know, if you're using three three filters, uh, then you're 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 doing that work uh, you know three different three different times. Um, I think it's important to, to understand what the components are of what a flat and a bias and a dark frame are, um, but. Uh, I, I start my students off and, and now uh, and I'll and I'll show you just real briefly, um, you know, just a wonderful tool, a batch tool in Pix Insight called Weighted Batch Processing, and and uh, which uh, essentially does uh, does all those all those steps for us. Uh, the next thing I next thing I do is is I take these three ma the masters that come out of the weighted batch uh, processing. And I do a little cleanup. I do some some background extraction and and some a little bit of noise reduction uh, on each of those masters uh, before uh, before I uh, combine them into into a color image. Um, and of course, uh, since the each each master is uh, like H alpha or S S two or O three that I'll use in my example here. Um, uh, they're all taking at different times and different and they're all being you know the images are all dithered and so so you do have to register the the three masters before you combine them um, then you're going to make your your color image uh, 
do some cropping and then I then I do another uh, 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 background extraction. And again, uh, each one of these each one of these blocks uh, can be done in far more you know instead of an automatic background extraction, I, you know I've now graduated to doing a dynamic background extraction and so on and so forth. But this is to get you started, and and then you can start digging into the into the details uh, when you become more comfortable. Then we're going to color calibrate the image. Um, then we're going to kind of set the set the, uh, the 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 dark point, uh, the black point, uh, and then we're going to change it from a linear image uh, to to uh, to a nonlinear image and. Essentially, that's our stretching. Or we're going to do a histogram transformation. Um, then we're going to kind of, especially with uh, narrow band, uh, and, and then I'm going to be showing you a nebula tonight, um, which is by two orders of magnitude, mostly hydrogen. And, and so we're going to need to reduce the, the amount of, 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 contribution from hydrogen so that the other two colors, uh, uh, oxygen and, and, and sulfur, have, uh, can actually contribute uh, to the image. And then we're going we're gonna to take out the background noise. We're going to sharpen the image. We're going to do some color saturation, and then we're going to, and then we're going to play, with the, uh, play with the contrast. Okay. Um, and so translating... Translating those um, uh, blocks into into the actual process blocks uh, on Pix Insight, um, and what I've done is I put together um, and and, I'll, and I'm going to give you my email here in a, in in a second. Um, um, you can you can uh, I'm going to make this uh, this set of of, of uh, process steps available to anybody who who would like them, um, and and so what's going to happen is is not only are they the 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 the, the bare uh, what I consider the bare minimum steps uh, in getting uh, getting a, a fairly decent image. Um, but uh, I can share this with you so that you can just uh, load them onto Pix Insight and and be able to uh, uh, follow along. Now, like I said, I've been I've been using Pix Insight for about for about two years now, and and so I've gone from that very very basic list to you know uh, just uh, again just a lot of uh, additional uh, processes and and. A little special, uh, you know, uh, attending to various image issues, but uh, again, that's that's for the the more more advanced uh, uh, user. And uh, my goal tonight is is just to get you started and to and uh, make you feel like you can get something accomplished without having to get buried in the in 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 the details. Um, so. Um, I, you know, feel free to, to email me. Um, and so my email is very, very easily, uh, just dennis.rosco at gmail. And, and so, uh, <clears throat> so when I do this live demonstration, um, um, you know, I'll be using the same email, the same process steps that I, that I can email to you. And there's a couple of noise reduction dialog boxes that I will send you that have some set, that have some settings in it. Um, was there a question? No. Okay. Um, and so um, let's see where was I? Oh yeah. So uh, so you can you'll have everything all set up and 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 even the um, even the um, uh, the way I've saved all those process icons have have all of the have all of the the settings that I have kind of fine tuned for this demonstration. Okay, I uh, just need to acknowledge the fact that uh, we are going to be using uh, Pix Insight version uh, one point eight, the latest uh, the latest version. And there's been some recent uh, recent updates. Um, uh, there's been some really cool things added to Pix Insight, like. Um, the uh, the new uh, color calibration the the um, uh, spectral 
uh, photographic, uh, uh, photometric uh, color calibration, uh, and a lot of other nice advanced things. But uh, that's that's for that's 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 for another time. Okay. All right. So let me minimize. So any any questions about about the basic uh, about the basic workflow? Okay. Pretty. Pretty, 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 pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, so let's, uh, let's, uh, I'm just going to take you from, from front to back here. Um, so let me open up uh, uh, Pix Insight. Now, I did mention that, um, in fact, the last object I did, I'm, I'm not much of a broadband guy, uh, but I did recently finish, well, who knows when I finished it's you know, with the, skies and the conditions that we've had i've been working on stuff from months and months ago um but um but what i what i uh, use is uh, to do all of my calibration uh is i use uh, under scripts and batch processing uh, weighted weighted batch processing and let me uh, bring this up it takes a little while to come up Ah, uh, here it is. All right, so let me put it put in. So, so one of the last objects I did. So, one of the things that you do with this is you basically load in all of your all of your 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 master darks uh, at uh, at all of the durations. Uh, I I was doing a mixture of 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 narrow band and broadband uh, filters, and at uh, at different uh, at different exposures. Um, and so, so what you do is is you load all of your stuff in here. So here are my two. Now I use master darks, um, and and basically, uh, so they're already been they've already been integrated, um, but but they essentially, as Arun said, they still have the the bias uh, in the, in them. So they've only been only have been integrated. And of course, I've got master darks for the for the for the different exposures. Um, for the flat frames, I do the same thing. I make I make master flats, and and so you'll see that I don't have anything in the bias. And that was a very good point that Arun uh, brought up: is that um, in your master flat, uh, so they. So each individual sub uh, flat uh, has been the bias has been subtracted from it, uh, and then and then uh, and then they are all integrated. And so these are integrated uh, master flats for blue, green, luminance, and 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 um, and and red. Um, and so. You then, uh, and the way you load this stuff, I mean, you just load everything up here. You go down here, you load in your bias, you click on your darks, load your load your darks. Um, it's all very self-explanatory, and and I just go with all of all of the default settings. Um, uh, virtually, this is other than changing the output directory where you where you want all of the all of the master files to go. Um, uh, you're basically just inputting uh, all your lights, so you can see all my raw light frames here. Uh, these th these are the H alpha, blue, greens, and luminance, and and red. Um, and then um, so this is a kind of a summary. Uh, this just makes sure that the status is correct. Everything is is you know what darks are associated with what what frames. I, I don't do flats on 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 narrow band. I never have. Um, I know I know a lot of folks do, but I have never seen the need to do flats on on narrow band images. Um, and so uh, now you can, in fact, if you want to see what's what is what is going on. If I if I click on one of these light frames, um, I can show the calibration diagram of of uh, and this is essentially what a rune showed uh, is you have the light and you're subtracting the the dark at the same same duration uh you're you're dividing uh, the the flat and you end up with a with a calibrated calibrated light okay and so you pull you pull the trigger uh and then you go for coffee 
Uh, and, and, and when you come back, I can close this now. I'm not going to run it because it, it takes a long time. Uh, but you'll, you'll, you'll end up in a, in a dedicated directory, which you know I affectionately for M33 called it batch. And you will end up with all the calibrated files, uh, logs of what's going on. Uh, you'll get all the registered files. Um, but if I look at the masters, um, I now have three generated and calibrated uh, integrated masters. And so if I, if I just kind of double click on one of these, um, and I can, I, I can, I can close that right now. And so, so what it's going to, what it's going to give me is in the, in this batch processing, it, it's actually, it's actually, um, rejecting, um, you know, I set the, so many sigmas, so many, uh, 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 I think a three sigma point where, where I'm throwing out the really super high stuff and the super, super low stuff. Um, and so if, if I, if I, uh, look at this, this is, this is what was, um, uh, oh no, this is the H alpha. This, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't very, this isn't very exciting. Let me, let me open up, let me open up the, uh, the, uh, the, the luminance channel. Uh, okay, so let's go. So here was that batch file, and here were the masters. So let's let's look at uh, let's look at look at luminance. And this is kind of cool. Um, so I must be on a on a uh, glide path uh, because there's uh, you know the one of the one of the beauties of of Pix Insight is. No more do I throw 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 frames out because of flyovers. Uh, so so here's all of the stuff that was rejected um, uh, within the weighted batch processing. There are some large integration, uh, large uh, linear rejections, and all kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, so uh, so that's going to take out take out all of all of all of those airplane trails. Uh, this is this is just the the you know the the other end of the lower end of this noise that was rejected, and then and then finally uh, you know here is the uh, here is the uh, you know the the master the master luminance uh, uh, channel, um, and so uh, boy I tell you and the other thing that the weighted batch processing does is it, is it does look at through some criteria, the quality of, of the images and, and and from where the name comes from weights them uh, into 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 a hierarchy of what's what actually gets what actually gets integrated. Okay. All right. So let me switch out of this. And and so what I've done is these are these are three master files that that are that are just uh, you know straight from the um, straight from the weighted batch processing. Um, this is the H, H alpha, and this is this is the O O three. Now there's a little bit of processing done on this, and now I'm going to show you what what that is in a second. And then and then here is the here is the um, is the is the S S two file. So. As you can see in these in these labels here, it's not only the master, but I've done a dynamic background extraction and a little bit of noise reduction on the individual masters uh, before before I combine them into the into the color image. Uh, so I'm going to just going to put these guys down here. I don't need them right now, and and so now this is the raw master. Uh, so this hasn't done. I haven't done any processing on this. This is just how it came out of came out of the uh, weighted batch processing. Um, so now the uh, file that I'm gonna send anybody who, who wants it, uh, you just drop it into a directory and then you go into uh, process icon, load process icons, uh, just browse to wherever you drop the file I send you, it will have an XPSM extension on it. 
uh, you select that and it'll bring them up and and it will allow us to um, just uh, serve two purposes here. It'll give you all the processes, but in the order that I actually use them, okay? All right, so this is a, a screen function. That's the same thing that there's a little bit of, there's an icon up here. Uh, so I can, I can shut off the stretch. This is, this is not a permanent stretch. Uh, and, and so this basically stretches and unstretches the, 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 the image. All right. So one of the things that I do is, is I re, from each of my masters, I, re, I reduce the, uh, you know, uh, the background, any background gradients. And, and so, and again, what I'm showing you guys is straight defaults, um, automatic, the, the most automatic part of, of Pix Insight. Uh, uh, in this, this particular case, you're going to, you're going to just open this puppy and, and drag the triangle into it. And, and it's going to create a, you know, a, uh, you know, uh, a, a background, uh, corrected, uh, image. And in this particular case, if I look at that, I can see the gradients, uh, that have been, so this is just the background that's been subtracted. I don't need that for anything, and then uh, and then this is this is the this is the new corrected uh, corrected image. Uh, so just to keep screen clutter down here, I don't I don't need that uh, that original image anymore, and I'm going to just kind of work with work with this one. Um, now, thanks to Jeff. I don't know if Jeff is still on the line. I know he had a meeting to go to, but Jeff. Uh, way back when I was first started and I and I still use it as as part of my preconditioning of the masters um, I use something that's called a multi-scale linear transformation and again um, uh, all of the defaults or all of the settings for this have been built right into these icons so there's really nothing that you have to do but but to but to open this and and drag it in and what this does is this uh, uh, really does a nice job in, and so I don't know if you can see all the modeling here, all the, all the background noise in between the stars. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of that. And so I'm just going to drag this transformation in here and boy, that does a really nice job of cleaning up, cleaning up the, uh, cleaning up the, cleaning up the noise. Okay. All right, so now, so now my H alpha here is is at the same point as my as my O3 and 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 S2. I just did the same same steps at this at this point. Um, so so what I'm going to do now is is I need to I need to register these uh, these images um, so that I can combine them into 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 a color color image. Uh, so let me just put this guy down, down here, and and so I'm going to go into um, uh, star alignment, and I'm just going to work with what I've got on the desktop here. So I'm going to use as my reference image for alignment uh, the H alpha, uh, which usually has the most most detail in it, of course. And so I'm going to do that. And, and then down here, I'm going to add um, if, uh, to register uh, O3 and S, S2, okay? And I'm going to just execute that. All right, and so it's going to generate, generate two, more, two, more, two, more, two more files for me. And and as, as essentially, these are the, they'll they'll look exactly the same. It's just that they've they've now been registered uh, and aligned uh, to the uh, to the to the to the H alpha, uh, and it just appends this with the with the registered uh, uh, node on here. So so I don't I don't need uh, again just to keep keep things clean on this desktop here. Um, I don't really need those originals because now I have ones that are registered to H alpha. 
So let me just kind of tuck these aside. Any questions up to this point? I know I'm kind of kind of zipping through this pretty fast, but uh, I'm okay speed for everybody, for the for new folks? Yeah, it's going all right. All right, cool. All right, so 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 uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, uh, make my uh, so I've got registered uh, uh, three registered uh, masters, uh, and, and again, uh, if I'm just using narrow band, I'm, I'm I really just need to combine an RGB. Uh, if you're doing if you're doing broadband, there's an L RGB com combination. Uh, basically, which just essentially adds that that luminance luminance channel. Okay, and so I'm just going to uh, use the Hubble palette. So for red, uh, I'm going to select my S2 registered, and for my green, uh, which will be the H alpha. All right, and then for blue is my O3 and and we're just going to so that's pretty that's pretty quick and so at this point uh, just do a quick quick stretch there is uh, there is there's my pretty uh, actually pretty ugly image okay so uh, at this point, I tell the class, uh, "Okay, the the fun has just begun. <laughs> uh, this is the this is the raw uh, uh, R, 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 RGB image." Um, so, okay, here, so, Dennis, yeah, yes. Um, so, at this stage, you're not really doing anything that controls how those various channels are mixed. It just flat out puts them all together. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. comes later as far as how you then try to balance that out. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh yeah, we'll we'll actually we'll actually get we'll actually get to that. I don't I don't know if I know what you mean by balancing them out. I mean these are these are the contributions. Now, one of the things that we're gonna have to correct for is is in this image the hydrogen. Um if I just if I if I uncouple this. Um, oops, and let me just just expand it through this. Um, you're gonna you're gonna see that this image is is dominated dominated by green, uh, and but we're going to we're going to take care of that at a later step. But relatively, we're only going to be re oops. Um, we're going to be reducing the 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 contribution of hydrogen to the image. Now you're not, you know, um, uh, we're not we're not going to be doing any of that uh, with the with the broadband. Um, so I don't or no, I don't know if I'm not answering your question correctly or what. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of, you know, how how much weight you give each channel, right? Um, and so I think in your case where you say you got, you know, twice as much H alpha as as the rest and you need to scale that back down, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Yeah, and, and so, uh, and feel free for any, any other folks to jump in here, but <clears throat> it's not just a factor of two uh, in, 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 in most... <clears throat> In a lot of cases, it's much, much higher than that. Uh, uh, H alpha, in, and again, it depends on the nebula, uh, but on an emission nebula like this, the H alpha really, really, domi really dominates. Okay. All right. So, so as you can see here, um, when I combine these, these, these channels, uh, you can see some, some registration artifacts along the, along the edges here, along the top and, and I don't know if it, if, it, if it how well it shows up, but the the very next thing I do is 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 I do a dynamic crop, um, and that's a pretty easy tool to to use. And so I'm just going to make this window a little smaller, and I'm going to get rid of all of those edge artifacts.
it's probably you probably can't see what I'm seeing, but I see like individual overlapping, uh, you know, like red and green pixels and so on and so forth on the edges. Um, <clears throat> but now I've now I've, I've elim eliminated that, and and so so at this point, um, I'm going to do another. Now that I've combined all three channels. Uh, I'm going to look for any additional gradients that I might have added uh, to the uh, to the image. So again, I'm going to do another background extraction, and and again, I and I'm using the automatic background extractor. Um, I this is where I started. Uh, you know, now I very carefully place sample points and and do a lot more detailed work at this stage. Uh, but for the purposes of tonight, I just wanted to make this as easy and, and as automatic as possible. So again, I'll just use the, the automatic background extractor, drag it in here. And, and, and at this point, I don't need that image anymore, anymore. So I'm just going to say, yeah, um, so now if I look at look at the background, this is the this is the gradient that I removed. And you can you can see that there was actually significant amount of gradients uh, throughout the throughout the image. So I don't need that anymore. So now I've got now I've got my uh, uh, image here that that at least has the background gradients uh, gradients removed okay all right but we still have a long ways to go all right so let's let's do that and so now um the again there's there's since i've learned uh pix insight there's been three ways to uh color calibrate uh, an image um the very first one that I learned uh, was uh, was uh, just called color calibration, <clears throat> but in order to use that, you have to you know, kind of get a neutral, uh, do a background neutralization, and that's a pretty easy pretty easy step. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to find a an open area here. Uh, in between, in between the stars, there's a nice, nice open background, and and so I'm going to create a a uh, preview window. Open up a window just in this. Now things, stuff like opening up windows, and, and so here, there's 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 the background that I'm going to use as as a as a reference to neutralize. The, all the entire background. Um, um, how to create how to create uh, preview windows and that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, that's those are part of the basics that you can you can easily learn on your own. And so I'm going to use that region of interest and select that preview. Say OK, and uh, and then essentially. I'm going to then just drag and drop, and that. Uh, so let me reset uh, the the stretch, and so now now we've done a background neutralization. Now I'm going to leave this this preview window of that space because that's actually that's actually used uh, in the color calibration. Um, so for for my reference uh, image, uh, we're going to just we're, we're going to be using the whole the whole image, so we're not going to touch anything here. So again, all I need to do here is click on region of interest, and we're going to select that same preview window, and then we're going to calibrate this image. Okay. Um, Again, you can see the 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 dominance of 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 the of the green, uh, and so let me close this because we don't need this anymore. And I'm going to reset the stretch, and, and then restretch it. Okay, so the next step, uh, we are going to prepare this image for our 
linear to nonlinear stretch. And uh, the way we do that is uh, we're going to set the uh, uh, black point for the uh, for the image, uh, which will help facilitate us uh, in the stretching stretching process. Um, so the way we do that is we go to this uh, dialog called RGB workspace. And um, the next step uh, for setting that dark point requires us to set all of the luminance coefficients uh, for the three red, green, and blue channels uh, and make sure those are all set at one for the, for the next uh, step. Uh, so that's easily done. We just open up that dialog box uh, you won't you won't actually see any any change there, um, so we don't need that. And so now we're going to open up another process called arc sine stretch, and we're going to shut off the stretch by the screen uh, transfer function. Uh, so we're not going to actually stretch the image with this process. So we're not going to use this upper part. Uh, we're just going to use this to estimate the black point. And the way we do that is just by hitting the real-time preview. Uh, select estimate black point. And uh, we will see all of these uh, exaggerated uh, colors in the, in the image. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this slider bar to just eliminate all of the extra brightness or extra uh, points. Uh, there's a few there and just back it off at that point. And that, that has set our, that has set our black point. Uh, so I can close that uh, preview screen and, and now just apply that to our image, all right? So we don't need that anymore. So now we're going to move into the nonlinear world and we're gonna open up a process called histogram transformation. And um, uh, we actually don't need the screen transfer anymore because we're, we're gonna be uh, doing all of our stretching uh, with this, uh, with this uh, transformation. Um, so we're going to select select our image, uh, which is right here, and uh, then we're going to open up a uh, again a real time preview. And so now at this point we're going to grab this part of the histogram and we're going to just uh, stretch this such that we are now going to emphasize the very low valued pixels and stretch them into higher values. And you can see our three three color components here. Um, and so uh, we want to stretch this a little bit more. And so we can get a little more resolution at the lower end here just by selecting this. And so let's do a little more stretch. And this is where the right side of your brain is going to take over. Uh, you're going to stretch this image to get sufficient nebulosity. And a little bit too much there. All right, so let's go with that. And then we're going to bring the histogram back to its just so that we're just there at the start. Yeah, just about there. That looks great. All right, so we can close the real-time preview, and then we're going to apply that uh, to our image, and now it has been permanent, permanently stretched. All right, so we're making good progress. Um, so the next thing we're going to the next thing we're going to do in our in our list here is we're going to uh, knock down uh, that strong component of, of uh, H alpha, as we mentioned earlier. Um, and so the way we're gonna do that is with another process called SCNR. And we're going to eliminate uh, literally about 
of the green component, uh, which is the dominant uh, uh, contribution from the hydrogen uh, ionized uh, atoms. And uh, we're going to just apply that. And voila, now we're getting to see an image that looks more like more like the more like the Hubble palette. All right. Okay, so we can close close that. So at this point, uh, we have our we have our images is starting to look pretty good, but we're we're gonna we're gonna work on the background noise, and then we're gonna sharpen the image, uh, raise uh, the little uh, play with the color saturation to our liking. And then finally, uh, play with the uh, play with the contrast. Uh, so we're we're getting close. Um, so I use a, a tool here, which I have found to be really excellent for eliminating background noise, called TGV denoise. And so the way we use this tool is we first are going to extract the luminance portion of our image. And we're going to make a mask out of this. And, and remember, we're just going to look for, we want to reduce the interstellar noise. And so we don't want to affect the, the stars or the nebulosity. So we're going to invert this image. And you can see the stars have all turned black and, and the nebulosity is gray and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but everything in white uh, will actually be uh, affected by, by this tool. So we're going to take this and use it as a mask, and we're going to drop it in here. Uh, I'm just going to minimize that. Don't, uh, don't close that mask because uh, it's, it's needed uh, during this process. Um, and so you can see that everything that's in red is, 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 is protected. Um, so it's not very pretty to look at that, uh, that, so we can, we can actually, um, just lower this down here. Um, we don't have to look at, look at the mask. Um, and so what we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a preview window so that we can just look at that interstellar noise. Let's look at that preview and zoom way in there and, and you can see all of this modeling and, and all this additional noise. And so we're gonna get rid of that. And um, the, way we're, the way we're gonna do that is, 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 with, is with this tool. Now, again, um, you can play around with these settings. Uh, the only setting that is really worth playing with is the edge protection. But again, again, for the purpose of this tutorial, um, we're just going to go with the defaults because the defaults really do a, a great job. And so I'm just going to drag this in here and, and let this uh, uh, give us a little uh, noise reduction on the preview. I use the preview because this is a, a little bit of an intensive process and, and we want to get a, an idea of what it's going to look like in the, in the overall image um, and not take a lot of time to do that. So so that looks pretty good. Uh, and so now I'm going to go to the go to our image, and we're going to apply that same uh, same algorithm uh, to the to the entire entire image. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time. It's doing doing each 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 of the channels. Um, but I found this tool to do a, a really a great job. Uh, it's comparable to the one of the newer tools on the market called uh, Blur uh, uh, or Noise Exterminator, and uh, uh, but I've elected to stay stay with this one because I've always had really good luck with it. Okay, so now now we've got uh, some nice uh, some nice uh, clean um, uh, clean background, uh, and and so we don't need this uh, this preview preview anymore. And, and, and of course, now we're going to remove the, remove the mask. Now you can tell when the image has a mask on it, the, this tab uh, turns, uh, turns brown. And so we're going to remove that mask because we don't need, need it anymore. So things are looking good. 
All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen this image. And uh, the sharpening tool that I use, uh, which is actually pretty easy to use, is, is, is called uh, Unsharp Mask. Uh, seems to be a little bit backwards in the naming, but uh, it actually will, uh, in fact, sharpen the image. Now, what we need to do is create another mask. And, and I can do that with this tool, with this range selection mask. And uh, again, this is pretty easy to use. Um, if I click on the real-time screen, uh, I can see that I've got, <laughs> you know, I'm essentially don't have a mask at all because I'm everything is white and I'm just allowing everything to everything to be uh, uh, um, uh, sharpened. But we're going to do that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the lower lower limit here and drop it so that so the white areas are only going to cover our nebulosity, something just like that. Yeah, that looks that looks great. All right, so we're going to generate that mask. And so I can close the real-time preview, and there's our mask. And we're going to, again, so, so what's in white is basically going to get acted upon. And so let's apply our mask. There we go. And again, let's just minimize that. Again, don't, uh, don't... Uh, Close that mask. Uh, so I'll just put it put it down there, and um, so we don't need the mask generator. So we're going to open up this tool called Unsharp Mask, and um, uh, we're going to generate another another preview window. So let's uh, select some some nice edgy stuff and some nice detail within our nebulosity. Uh, let's just say like right in here. And so let's take a look at that. So that's the area that we're going to kind of focus on and, and, and sharpen that area. And, and again, uh, the default values are really very, very, very good here. Uh, so if I apply this to the preview, you can see how nicely it was uh, sharpened. Now, this tool actually allows you to, in real time, uh, I can take this standard deviation and drop it all the way down to 0.1. And, and that's what the original image looks like. And so you can slide it here and, 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 sh and, and sharpen it is, as m much as you want. Oh, I, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I need to open up a, a real-time preview window. <laughs> or else we wouldn't see anything happening there. Uh, okay, so let's do that again. So I can, yeah, look at that. And so, so we can, um, uh, the default was around two. I usually run this tool someplace between two and three. Well, let's just do two and two and a half here. And so that looks, that looks really nice. Uh, so I'm going to close, close the tool apply it uh, t uh, to to our to our to our preview screen that looks really that looks really good uh all right so so let's uh let's go to let's go to our our overall image and uh, let's see we don't need that preview window anymore and let me apply that to the overall image all right, so there is our sharpened image. Fantastic. Okay, so I can close this tool. I can close the mask. Um, so now we're getting down to our last couple steps here. Um, at this point, uh, I use this color saturation tool. And, and we're going to, again, create a preview window and... Now you have the you have the opportunity here to do all kinds of customized uh, individual colors. I can put little lock points across this curve, and 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 either decrease uh, or or increase uh, particular color colors. I can get all get all kinds of uh, 
Uh, I don't usually do that. I do that in some special cases. Um, but uh, for for most of the time, um, all, all I do, and I can increase the range here a little bit, is I just grab this little bullet at, at one side and I bring up the overall intensity of the in, of the of the entire image. And that's a little bit too much. All right, so let's let's hold it just about right there. And so we can close the the preview and then apply this to the to the whole image. And there we go. Okay, so finally, um, what we're going to do now is, is uh, we're going to do this last step uh, in, in looking, at, looking, at, looking at the contrast. And I can, again, make a preview. And I can bring back, bring back the background just a little bit more, get rid of any kind of background. And, and then bring the overall overall image up like that. And again, this is the right side of your brain, whichever way you want to do that. So let's let's go with let's go with that. And and then uh, we can drag that over and and apply it. And so finally, um, now, now I would be saving all of these individual steps. Uh, so the, in, in the interest of time, uh, I haven't been saving the, the uh, PIX Inside native files. I usually do that. Or if you hit save after each process, uh, you can save the whole process uh, uh, for, for reanalysis and get back to any particular image. Um, I found it find it a little bit more convenient to save as I go and just change the file name uh, with the with the names of the steps that I that I have taken. Okay, so our last uh, stage, uh, so that we can share this with all of our friends and family, um, is I uh, can certainly save this native uh, version, uh, but uh, that's not going to be very meaningful to our to our uh, folks that we wanna send this to. So we're gonna do a save as, and we're going to save this image as a, as a JPEG. And uh, we're just, we're just uh, gonna call, uh, just leave it at the default name there. I'll change the name later. Um, and uh, hit save. And what you wanna do here is raise the quality of the image up to a hundred. Um, and what a hundred means uh, for JPEG in this particular option um, is that it is what's called a lossless compression. Uh, so you're only getting about two and a half, 2.6 to one compression, uh, but there's no loss of information. It's, it's the highest quality JPEG. And so if you're, you're going to be publishing this or, or sending this out and you want to have the highest quality, uh, set that quality to 100. And then we're just going to say OK to that. Uh, and that's about it. So we're um, so let, let's just take let's just take take a look at that at that file uh, in uh, just a regular regular viewer. And there we have it. Well, okay, so um, that's from front to back and uh, be happy to entertain uh, any any questions at this point. Dennis, uh, Nolan yeah. here. Yeah, no. Um, so I'm working with some data from three years ago. I haven't done any imaging in three years. Okay. And, um, and it's all LRGB. Okay. With weighted batch pre-processing, right. for example, you didn't go through the registration process. Is there any real problem, especially with LRGB data, and maybe you do it different with um, narrowband, to just go through, use weighted batch pre-processing all the way through registration? Oh, uh, um, so... 
You know, that's interesting because in all of the LRGB work that I've done is I end up with with three masters. I don't I don't I don't I don't get a color in, unless there's an option for it. I I, I don't know of it. Um, when you use weighted batch processing, uh, oh yeah, I, I you're right. I mean, in that sense, uh, maybe I'm using the terminology wrong. You get okay. three, you get an R G B master plus your luminance. That is correct. And then I work on them separately. I yeah, yep. and then you do the, your narrow. Ba I mean, you do your R G B combination. That is correct. Yes. Okay. So, so I you know I I I pre I call it preconditioning. So I, I take the 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 raw masters and and I and I and I do that uh, background extraction on each of them as as well as is eliminating that preliminary noise. Sure, and and you can choose to whether you use DBE on each one of them right before you combine them. Yep. Uh, yeah. The second thing, is, second question. Uh, by the way, I've also tried that easy processing. Sweet, that's on Pix and Site, and you know actually it's like cheating, but it it comes up with some pretty decent image. Really? Okay. Yeah. And that takes that 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 takes you all the way through. Pretty much so. You have to select, and you there is a little bit of trial and error. Like if you want to check uh, MLT um, or 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 ArcSign stretch, it gives you options. But now you can put if you get blur exterminator, that's even built in. Oh wow! It. Okay. So you yeah. can check that, and it just sort of takes it from beginning to end. Um, <laughs> it's a long process. I mean, it takes a long time for your system. Right. My system, it takes maybe it could take an hour and a half. But oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, but, okay. But it, it spits out something. The other thing is when you used, if you're just doing HA with data which mm -hmm. I've gotten from a friend mm -hmm. and with LRGB, would you map the HA then to the red channel? Oh, so all you have is H alpha data? H alpha with LRGB. So you've taken some extra, your narrow band data oh, with your oh. LRGB data. Would you map that to the red channel? Because I noticed here you were doing the Hubble palette and you put that to the green chair. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so under there is, there is actually a under render. Um, yeah, no, there's a special process for, for, com, for adding H alpha to your, to your L L R G B. Okay. Um, Let's see, where was it? And you know, by the way, easy processing did that just, you know. Yeah. You didn't have to worry about it. It's an under utilities. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, and, and so it's called the uh, uh, narrow band RGB. And 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 as essentially, you identify your RGB RGB source, mm -hmm. and then your and then your narrow narrow band uh, uh, for the red for the red channel. Uh, for example, so these are the I just used these two when I when I added uh, H H alpha uh, okay. to to the uh, you know to the image, and and basically. When you do that, um, yeah, that's what that's that's what you end up with. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, any other questions? And like I said, please, please email me. Uh, I, I, you know, I had to go through this pretty fast. All right. Well, uh, sorry for the confusion on the, the link uh, starting off this morning or, or this evening. Uh, and hopefully Kevin will be back for the for the next one and be a much better host. <laughs>